welcome back to Two Chicks and a Horror Flick. I'm Tawny Ray. And I'm Felicia Connor. And we are going to talk today about the movie Host. Yes. Okay, so this movie came to us as a recommendation from a friend on Instagram, Terrified State. So he has a uh, website that includes like horror movie reviews, and he has a lot of great horror content on Instagram too, so definitely follow him. And I'm so excited to talk about this movie, but before we do that, what are you drinking? Oh, I am drinking an Old Fashioned. My husband made an Old Fashioned. I know it's the same as last, but you know what? Um, for martinis, I didn't have blue cheese stuffed olives. So I was like, well, mm. that's not going to work. Yeah. I know you love those olives. So <laughs> I do love those olives. It makes the martini. So yeah. Um, I got some whiskey again today. We got some larceny. <laughs> this shit is 92 proof, which is higher than what we were buying before. So it's very strong, but that's okay. It's very good. And right before we started recording, Tawny and my husband had a little moment about whiskey. Tawny discovered that she was actually drinking scotch. (laughs) I would like to be like a cool whiskey drinker, but I'm not at all. And he's asking me these questions. He's like, well, what do you like? Do you like like the smoky part of the like (laughs) scotch? I'm like, I don't know. (laughs) I just like it. I just like it. No, I'm the same. Like, um uh vodka i like when it's smooth but i like it to have a little bit of a burn so i don't know like what that is if it's like i don't think it's oaky because i don't think that but i just know i like it to have a little bit of a burn but not too much and i like it to be smooth and i don't know how to explain it any other way i do want to share before we get started because i'm really excited but now that i'm sitting here i realize oh wow you can't even really see it i got some t-shirts because i don't have any horror inspired t-shirts oh okay yeah so i have this one oh cute yeah and on the back you can't see it and i can't turn it says counselor oh my god that's so cute and i got some other ones that You know, I'll wear, and I was all excited. Um, I also wanted to do a PSA. What did I want to do a PSA on? Oh, here's my PSA. I watched The Social Dilemma, and Mm. you had already watched it, Mm -hmm. and I didn't watch it until last week right after we recorded. And so my PSA to everybody out there is watch this movie Mm -hmm. and turn off your fucking notifications on your Mm -hmm. phone and your social media. I have done that for the last week, and it's changed my life. I I used to spend hours on Instagram a day, and now I spend, like, maybe 30 minutes to an hour. And even using Instagram for business, like, be, using Instagram for business, you, you got to be on there. You got to be, you know what I mean, posting, checking, sending messages, whatever. But you can still do that and do it in a way that reduces the amount of time that you're, like, on there scrolling. So what I'm saying is do it. It'll change your life. Even if you run a business on Instagram like it's helpful and I feel so much less stressed like it's actually shocking how much stress this is lifted off of me because I don't feel like a constant pull like the notifications were I didn't realize how much of a big deal I was like oh I'll just turn them off we'll see how it goes but I'm sure that's not going to make a difference I was fucking wrong you should do it that's my PSA I fully support I fully support this message I totally do because I was the same. You leave that movie thinking, oh God, like what can I possibly do? And I've seen people on in, on social media watch the movie and be like, I'm not a product, peace out. I'm canceling all my accounts. But the thing is, if you turn off your notifications, I've done this for every single account. I've turned off my notifications and it has changed my life as well. I was going on like, 10 hours, 10 hours on social media down to like one and a half or something like that. Like a day? Yeah. (laughs) Oh my God. (laughs) Because I also, but another clencher for me would be, I would sit while I work and plug in and listen to like a podcast or listen to, um, YouTube videos, which is a whole nother thing I can share with you. But, and so that would rack up, but also just checking, just checking, constantly checking. And what I've done is I also turned off the notifications and realized when I check my email, like maybe a a couple times a day, 
Like, I'm not missing anything. The world is fine. Like, everything is fine. I'm not missing anything. Um, I turned it off for, for everything. And so Instagram is the one I stay on the most. And that's because I love interacting with all of our friends on Instagram. But that's okay. And then the second part of it is, okay, we're a product. I get that. But just be conscious of what you click on and what you like. Right, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so I've been more conscious of that. But other than that, like, yeah, I totally agree with you. Yeah. I just, I just was like, other people should be doing this because I feel so much better. Like, <laughs> it does. It feels really good. Like, I, I would be in the car and I noticed this. I would randomly reach down for my phone. Mm. For why? 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 First of all, I shouldn't be. And second of all, like, what? No, there wasn't even a notification. Like I would notice I would reach down just almost automatically. And by turning off my notifications, so I saw Social Dilemma a couple weeks ago for like two, two weeks. I don't know what it's going on now. I don't do that in the car anymore because that constant, like, I don't know what it's like a fix, right? Of I'm going to miss something or I need to check it out is gone. Totally. And it is sort of like if you check your phone every like 30 minutes and you've got notifications turned on for everything, there's always going to be something there. Mm-hmm. So there's this like idea in your head where you're like, shit, there's going to be it. I, at least for me, like there's kind yeah. of this this running program in the back of my mind where I'm like, shit, there's going to be a thing. And like there's it's it's kind of excitement, right? Because like, you want to be talking to people and interact. You want online. a thing. Yeah. yeah. Like you kind of you kind of want one, but also you kind of don't. <laughs> and so it's like it's just an interesting I don't know. It's an interesting thing. So, and it's cool when I we've set time aside where we log in and we see the awesome comments from people on Instagram and have you know have a minute to like respond and and check out what they're sharing with us and it's really cool. I like it. I agree with you. Okay. Okay. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started here. I'm yeah. trying so hard not to forget the fact that there are spoilers. <laughs> I'm just gonna say now spoilers ahead. If you haven't watched this movie. Don't listen unless you're fully ready for spoilers. So the movie that we watch is obviously Host, which was on Shudder. And let me just scroll around to find my notes here. Um, the So obviously it was 2020. It was released, I think, in at the end of July, if I'm remembering correctly. So it hasn't been out for very long at all. The synopsis is... Six friends hire a medium to hold a seance via Zoom during lockdown, but they get far more than they bargained for as things quickly go wrong. So the director is Rob Savage. It is written by Gemma Hurley. Hope I'm not butchering that. Rob Savage and uh, Jed Shepard. And then the people in it were Haley Bishop, Gemma Moore, Emma Louise Webb, Radina Drundova, and... Caroline Ward and they all used their like I think their own names oh yeah I recognize all those names okay I might have butchered the the names but um uh they well I they haven't really been in anything that I recognize and the director hasn't made anything else that I've seen so that's kind of where I'm gonna stop there and I want to know what you thought Felicia really me first oh yeah okay I really, really liked this movie. I really, really liked it. I, and this is why. So this is going to be fast. This isn't going to be long because my little dots here. First, I loved the Zoom idea, especially because I, I actually stopped it to Google it. I'm like, oh shit, this is like really recent. Um, I didn't realize how recent it was. I loved the Zoom. I also, you, you know, I'm all about reality or making it as real as possible yes and i loved that's exactly how zoom reacts you know we all uh, well a lot of us use zoom all the time that's exactly how it reacts as far as the waiting room and people logging in there was no there was no fakeness there with the zoom and i loved it all the way to the point that the movie was short and the movie was short because the person who started the zoom doesn't have a paid account and so it, it only allows for what like 45 minute Zoom meetings, unless you have a paid account. So good. I loved it. I also loved the acting. What I really loved was when I was curled up in a blanket with it over my face, like, oh my God, I looked at all the other people and they were all like, Gemma, I think it was, was in her hoodie like this. And the other, they were all like that. All of us. I felt like it was a part of the, I was a part of the Zoom call. Yes. It was so, so cool. 
I also loved, I loved the idea of the Zoom call because I was constantly from the very beginning looking at everyone's backgrounds, like constantly yes. scanning everybody's backgrounds, thinking something, oh, something's going to happen and I have to catch it. But there were so many backgrounds because there were so yeah. many callers. So it was hard. Um, and I also really liked, this is my last point, the, um, the idea of why the ghost came. So something I struggle with, because, <laughs> you know, maybe I'm weird and I love it and embrace it, is um, the idea of ghosts. And I, I believe in all that stuff. And I took like this um, training course about talking to other entities. And in that, it said that it's not, that's not, as far as like someone like evil coming in and all of that, even Ouija boards, that it's not evil because you create the space, you invite them in and you can end it whenever you want. So I thought it was really cool. The reason why that evil spirit came forward because of the joke that that one girl played and had created a space for it. Um, I bought that and I, and I loved it. So that is my, I loved it. And I constantly screamed. I don't, I, I'm so <laughs> excited to hear what you thought because I know a lot of stuff doesn't jump scare you. I was constant, constant jump scaring, constant. I screamed the whole time and that's the point of a scary movie, right? So. Absolutely. And I think a couple times, I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again in case, you know, people are jumping around episodes. I, I don't get jump scared very often. It's not that I don't get scared, but I don't physically jump. Like, I think it's just a neurological thing. Like, I must not have the, the neurological quickness to, to physically jump. And so Jade jumps all the time, and I laugh and make fun of him and stuff. But, like, I don't really jump. And I've said a few times on this podcast that other movies had made me jump. And while that's true, no movie has made me jump like this. Oh, in, shit! In, like... A long fucking time. Like, maybe when I was younger as a kid, I don't remember. But it made me think, like, oh, no, I was wrong. Like, those other those other ones got me. This fucking movie really got me. It got me two times so hard that I physically, like, ugh, like you know what I mean? Like, I was like, ugh, oh, God. And I, I gasped at the same time it's just not a normal reaction for me so the fact that it was able to be that effective I think is so telling like I also fucking loved this thing like I was like <laughs> and I was worried that you were gonna dislike some of the acting because I think there's like some choices that they make I wouldn't attribute this to the acting more the the you know script probably but there's like a couple choices that they make that I'm like okay what the fuck but like overall it is very realistic right and I liked that and I was hoping that you would like that too and I just was worried I was like oh maybe she's gonna like don't dislike <laughs> some of this but yeah no I thought overall they were really their reactions were really good especially especially the most important part when they got scared yes. when they got scared I was buying that they were all scared um, and that, and the reactions they were having with each other and, and all of that I thought was really good. When the guy towards the end, when the guy friend logs Teddy. back in because this horrible, irritating, irritating as all hell girlfriend. Ugh. As soon as she came in and she was hanging on him, I'm like, I'd hang up. I was like, Oh God, like I hate her. Um, if I saw that actress on the street, I'd punch her. I'm just kidding. I don't even, <laughs> what, I don't even remember what she looks like. <laughs> but, um, when it, he logged back in and the clown came, at first I was like, don't do this. Yeah. Like, this is not scary. And then it was him and I was like, okay, thank God. <laughs> because, yeah. But yeah, no, I thought, it, I thought the acting was really good. I, I believed it. I liked how pissed off that chick was that her friend, because I was just as pissed off at her friend. Yes. When her friend was like, I'm just joking, I would have been livid. I would have been like, God damn it, Tawny. I told you. Can you please show some respect? Like, I would have been pissed. And so I loved it. I do too. Oh my God, how much do you love Caroline? Okay, I'm sorry. Go, go, go. No, what no, no. You say? go. I was going to say I loved her. We all did. Me and, and the teens loved Caroline was her name. 
Remind he me was who scared that is. to do it from the beginning. Had the brilliant idea of putting her phone on the selfie stick and putting it up there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, I just loved it. But anyway. Yeah, she was a great character. I really felt like, okay, I'll be honest. I went into this movie being like, I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm going to like this. Like, I went in with very low expectations because of the, uh, like, format of it. I kind of was like, mm, I don't know. I've seen Unfriended. Have you seen Unfriended? Mm-mm. Okay, I've seen Unfriended, which is like this, and I've seen Searching. Have you seen Searching? Mm-mm. Oh my god, you need to watch Searching. It's not a horror movie, but it is like a thriller. It's like a crime thriller. It is so fucking good, Felicia. You need to watch this movie, actually, okay. like, immediately. And it's okay. it's like this. Like, this is the format. It's all through communication stuff. Like, it's through, like, your phone and the laptops, and it's this guy, his daughter goes missing, and he's trying to, like, track her down. And, like, can't seem to find her. And it's so fucking good. I loved this movie. Okay. I'm making a note of it. And so I just feel like Searching did such a great job of this that I just, you know what I mean? I was kind of like, I don't know. How how well are you going to scare me with this Zoom thing? I don't know. So I just, I didn't think it was going to be good. (laughs) Which I just, I think this is true for everybody. Like your expectations going in really affects your viewing experience. And so the fact that I think I had low expectations really helped because I was like, I don't think I'm going to like this. And honestly, like 15 minutes in the movie, I was fucking irritated. I was like, I'm on enough Zoom meetings as it is. This fucking sucks. I wish, you know, like I, (laughs) this is a total side note, but like, I'm also going to give you another soapbox, another PSA. If you're on Zoom meetings and you're not talking, you need to mute your ass. Mute yourself until you're talking. Just keep it on mute. And then when you go to talk, unmute. And then mute yourself again. Make it real easy. There's a setting where you can join a a meeting muted. So. Okay. And you can also hit space in in Zoom. I'm pretty sure. You can hit space to mute and unmute yourself. Anyway, I'm just saying that's PSA. So the first 15 minutes, I was like, oh, my God, if I have to watch 50 fucking minutes of these people talking over each other in Zoom, I might just fucking end it. Like, I just, I cannot deal with this. But thank God, after like, I don't know, 20 minutes, it totally lost. I I got lost in the movie. Like, I, I forgot that I was watching people on Zoom and it was beautiful. Like, it was so well done. So I loved that part of it. I totally agree. Yeah. I love it. I didn't, I don't do a lot of research beforehand. I, I, and so I didn't realize it. And as soon as it started, I'm like, oh, this is what Tawny calls a lost footage. <laughs> is what I thought. I was like, okay. And then everyone started logging in. I'm like, okay, okay. And I totally get what you're saying when they're kind of like chatting and blah, blah, blah. But, but I, as soon as I saw the backgrounds, I was like, oh shit, something's going to happen. So as they were like, blah, 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 I was like looking at the backgrounds of every single video. Yeah. <laughs> like to see, does anything show up beforehand? Um, yeah. Are you ready to jump into these notes? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, I'm going to need you to buckle up because we got a lot of notes, which is actually not usual for newer movies. Yeah, I'm surprised. Okay, cool. I'm Me excited. too. I was like, shit, there's actually a lot to this movie. And I, you know, I, I just shit, think- I should have brought my dinner in here. <laughs> <laughs> I think with older movies, it's like, you know, you've got time. Like people have time to kind of add shit to the trivia. But yeah, so there's a lot here. So first thing that I want to know is actually this movie um, was sort of born out of a prank video that the director did with his friends. Oh. And it's like a prank video slash short film, I guess you could say. And it's like two minutes. So I went and watched that. I should have sent it to you before we started recording. So you could have watched it too. But that got my ass too. It scared the shit out of me. And I was like, I don't know what it is about these. It must be the Zoom format that's like pulling me in and lulling me into this like I don't know, like false sense of security where I'm like, I, I'm just here. And then it scares the shit out of me. So anyway, how happy are you that it behind us is not a fucking doorway? So or happy. a hallway. Every, I said that to the kids. I was like every single person. Sorry. That was my, my little NARS hashtag NARS is Ooh. my favorite cosmetic brand. 
<laughs> I don't know what this is, but Here's all the beauty my... bloggers do it. Yeah. So you can see it's, this is like for older people. I never had to do this before, but my orgasm lip hydrator. Um, anyways, it clicked. That's why I did all that. Uh, oh, Francois Nars was awesome. Awesome. He had stuff. Orgasm, sin, lust, damned. That was the name of his products. And I have stories about that in a, for a later date. Um, but, um, oh, I was telling the teens, I'm like, every single person has a damn doorway. Like, can yes. anybody sit up against a wall, please? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be looking behind you. <laughs> yes. I'm sure that was by design. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. So, um, so I watched this and it's, it's, it's essentially the same deal, right? Like it's like he, um, as the director, he was like, oh, I think I'm hearing somebody and I'll get into more details about this later. But he's like, I think I'm hearing somebody in my attic. Like I'm going to bring you up there. So what he did was he like fashioned this like thing to hold his phone in front of the like laptop camera so that he could like cover it I'm gonna do it for those of you watching on YouTube but he would cover the camera with his hand like real fast and then have the video playing and so what's happening in the short is there's a clip playing from the movie Wreck which quarantine is essentially the American remake of Wreck right so there's a scene in Wreck where somebody goes up into their attic up into the attic and like looks around you know with the camera And uh, it scared the shit out of me. But then he, like, acts like he falls out of the attic and is, like, dead. And so it's, like, a two-minute clip. It's very short. And it's, like, a lot of the same people that are actors in the movie itself. And um, it just went viral. Like, and they got so many views on it. So they approached Shudder, or Rob Savage um, approached Shudder and was, like, I want to make a feature film of this, right? Like, I think that we can do it. That's it's cool. It's not terrible to watch, you know, even with the format. So I thought that was really neat. That's really neat. Now I want to look that up after. You should. It's interesting yeah, to I'm watch. Yeah, have to. And you can see it's, I mean, it's very similar to the final product. I have a question which you probably have in your notes. Was all of that um, Zoom recording real? Yep. So. Nice. <laughs> So let me get to the second main Sorry. part of my note. I no, was no, no. so curious. No, that was perfectly timed. It was almost like you were my plant, but you're not. <laughs> I'm not. We didn't talk about this beforehand. Um, so it says, and this all information so far, like I just got on IMDb and Wikipedia. So this says, host was filmed while quarantine restric- restrictions were in place due to COVID. And Savage had to direct. Oh, I can't talk. And Savage had to direct the re- actors remotely while they had to set up their own cameras, lighting, and stunts. Oh. Practical effects. Okay, Doing wait. stunts? Okay, yeah, let's halt there. <laughs> yes. All the furniture, all the shit, the, the husband coming, all of that? I think there are some that are not done in their homes, and I'll, I'll talk about that a okay. little bit later. But yes, dude, like most of that, I think they did themselves like how fucking crazy is that because i was getting some major major paranormal activity vibes after watching this movie and i was like how in the fuck did they pull some of this stuff off and so it was so shocking to learn that they did it themselves like in their own house and it just makes me want to say all actors you know poughkeepsie take Like, there's a whole nother level that you are capable of. So please take inspiration from that. You're going to come out of this uh, an acting coach. Yes. (laughs) Yes. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. (laughs) With What is that? With more fervor. Yes. Oh, gosh. I would be. I would be like the guy in um, Seinfeld, the soup Nazi. (laughs) Do you know? Have you seen it? 
Oh my god. I at know least... I know about the soup Nazi. Okay, at least watch the soup Nazi episode where he's like, get out! That I they would be like, Who are you? You've never been in a movie. I don't believe it! I'm a viewer. I am a viewer, and if I don't believe it, you are done. <laughs> Um, okay. okay, so if anyone wants to hire me for that, I will happily She's sit in and say, I believe it or I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I will make or break people's careers. <laughs> <Just kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so practical effects were also handled by the actors, and a virtual workshop was held on how to set up effects, such as moving doors, making things fly off shelves, and making things fly off shelves. Um, sorry, I was I was oh look, trying to look at your reaction at the same time I was reading. That did not work. That did not work very well at all. That's um, phenomenal, though. I know. I'm truly amazing. And just to educate myself, practical effects are like the moving of chairs and doors. And, like, practical means, right? Practical means in person. Like, it's mm-hmm. happening in real life, and you're capturing it with the camera. Versus, Versus digital? Versus, yes. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So, um, which is crazy to me. Cause I just also mm-hmm. want to say like, I, so my background is in video production. I've been in video production in the corporate world for like, you know, a handful of years and can't do mental math right now, but I have tried to do like minimal effect type stuff. Now, granted, most of the shit I do is like training videos and like standups and, you know, talking heads that's the majority of it, okay? But every once in a while, I've gotten the chance to do something, like, fun for school or just for, you know, in my um, career at some point. And I tried to do some sh- shit with fishing line because that's, like, one of the tricks, right? Is, like, you rig up some thin fishing wire and, like, open, you know, cabinet doors or whatever. It is not as simple as you think it is, okay? Like, I'm just saying, I've tried it. It's hard. So the fact that these people were able to pull it off, I think the fact yeah. that it's like you're recording through Zoom helps, right? Like you don't have like a super crisp Does ass Does the fishing camera. wire not like not show up? Is that why you use that? Because it's like clear? Yeah, because okay, it's clear okay. and thin. And, okay. and again, especially over Zoom, like when you're recording over Zoom, like it, you don't see it as much as you would like with a, you know, hefty camera. Right. But even still, it's not easy. Like, they had to have done, like, take after take after take of things. You know what I mean? Like, it's mm-hmm. just, you think it's And then be managing quick. that online over Zoom. Managing yes. that over Zoom. Like, hey, Tawny, okay, that didn't really work, so I need you to adjust this, this, and that. Well, all the, dude, corporations, businesses can't even have a functional meeting you know, like a, a, a meeting where someone's not muted or doesn't exactly. have malfunctions. This They recorded a whole movie. That is so impressive. It blows my mind. I know. It's so impressive. And um, also adding to the impressiveness. Check this out. This is still in my same note here. Um, Savage has stated that the movie took 12 weeks to complete from conception to delivery to shutter. 12 shut the front door (laughs) that blows my mind yeah we i can't wait to hear i hope you have how much it costs to make this movie or maybe you don't maybe not that's okay (laughs) let me just look it up real quick (laughs) no i am like that blows my mind that everyone was remote that this guy just thought of it from this prank it was all filmed this year yeah, because it blew my mind because when the girl walked up, um, shoot, it's not Emma, the dark-haired girl that plays the joke about the guy hanging Gemma. himself. Gemma. She's, like, outside the window, and she's yeah. like, you know, log in. Me and my kids were, like, joking, like, what doesn't she just come up? Like, why, why is she outside the window where she's obviously there? Why doesn't she just come up into the apartment? And then it started to hit me. Oh, shit, this is quarantine. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. When was this movie made? Um, I'm rambling now. Uh, but that they made this whole movie and got it to shutter within 12 weeks. With these difficulties, you're not even in the same room. That's f- fucking amazing. It was so good. 
It was, it was terrifying. Good. It was like every moment. I, I can't even think of a moment that I was like, eh. The only moment that I was like that was the clown, but then it turned out not to be like a possessed clown. So that was really good. I'll tell you my one moment. Yeah, my tell one me. moment that I was like, okay, was when in the very end, finally, when Gemma arrives at Haley's house, right? Mm-hmm. Is that her name? There was like enough people for me to not really remember who's who, but anyway, that she, girl, yeah, Their she gets friend. to the main host woman's house and um they they find each other and then instead of like doing something they fucking i fucking hated that as soon as you started okay that was a bad move and i just want to make that clear that was stupid (laughs) bullshit right there their fucking friends are dead there's all kinds of shit going on they find each other and they go "Uh, let's do our secret elbow handshake fuck both of you if you die in this end scene, I don't feel bad because that I totally agree. I'm bought in the whole time. And then they're like, <laughs> come on, Tawny, elbows. That was so stupid. I'm glad you said that because me and by the way, it's not just me who represents like 40 year olds and Tawny who represents <laughs> 30 okay 20 late 20 into 30 it's also my teenagers that represent teenager dumb (laughs) we're like they they all all of us almost at the same time went are you kidding me yeah like we all responded to that that was stupid are it there is utter utter terror There's utter terror and I don't even care if you have so much terror and then you see your friend come out and you're relieved that your friend came out. You wouldn't be like, (laughs) oh my gosh, I don't think I do that. Okay. You might be over. So it wasn't quite like that. It was that way to me. But they, (laughs) but (laughs) my thing was like, cause it's like, stupid. well, it's like COVID stuff, right? It's not like secret handshake shit. It's like, oh, we can't high five each other because we're going to touch our face. Are you fucking kidding me? That makes it worse. (laughs) That makes it worse. It was because they couldn't (laughs) high five because of COVID? Yes. Oh, that makes it worse. Worse. I know. I know. It's not great. That's the thing that I'm like, it it kills me because exactly what you're saying. People are dead. It's fucking crazy. The very last thing in your brain is going to be like, I better uphold these. (laughs) Yeah. Like, no way. No way is that realistic. That was the one thing that took me out of the movie. After we got about 20 minutes in, I was like. That took me out of the movie as well. Once you started mentioning it. Um, And at this point has pulled me that just makes me sick to my stomach that (laughs) they have this covid moment yeah i hate them right now for that so at the end though was so like jump scared the shit out of me me fucking too dude and now we were kind of going back and forth what do you think happened do you think they died i don't know perfectly sets it up for a sequel like i'm like bought into this but now because of that moment i hope they didn't survive how about, that? <laughs> How about that? So stupid. That's the first thing you think of. Okay, we're moving on. I I see. We're moving no on. way. You'd you totally hug your friend. You'd be like, COVID be damned. We just watched some people You're get killed. You're scared of COVID. I know. After all of this shit that goes down. You just watched, <laughs> yeah. Your friends Look, die. Tawny's looking at me, probably thinking, like, shit, I wish I didn't tell her that it was a COVID handshake. I <laughs> know, <laughs> I think it's important context. I didn't like, even pick up on that. Because that's the whole context of the movie, right? Is that there are. Yeah. They're I thought it was like a, you know, like a secret handshake. Yeah. I didn't pick up on the COVID, but that's me. That's why we're so great, different, because we're so different. Yeah. We're so great. <laughs> we're so different. <laughs> I didn't mean that in an arrogant way. I meant, like, you're so different from me because you pick up on all that stuff and I don't. And I don't always though. You pick up that stuff that I don't catch. I like, hate. I hate that. That I know is so dumb. But everybody, don't abandon it because it redeems itself at the end. Totally. I love the picture thing because I was like, okay, when I was um, posting the audio clip for Goodnight Mommy today. Yeah. And you were talking about when they were cutting her mouth, and you're like, no, oh my god, no, no, oh my god, 
no, no. Like you were doing that. That's how he was with the picture at the end of this movie. Okay. <laughs> I was like, I know something's going to be there and I'm not going to jump. Like I'm like bucking yeah. down and we're all watching. Snap. Okay. There's nothing. That's okay. There's snap. Okay. There's nothing. That's okay. And like I kept going through it. It's not going to make me jump. And then snap. <laughs> like I screamed. <laughs> we all screamed. <laughs> It's like, shit, it got me. It got me. It got me too, dude. It got me so hard. Because I also was like, I know they're about to do a jump scare. I know they are. I know they are. And I'm I'm over here watching it by myself, curled up, eating chips and salsa, okay? Because chips and salsa is my snack. That's what I eat I when it. I snack. Ooh, you'd love my husband makes the best salsa. Like, people order it from around our neighborhood. Oh, shit. I mean, yeah. like, listen, I'm very particular about my salsa. If it's got onions in it, it's a no-go for me. I know. I don't like onions. I think that we might have lost viewers. Because you <laughs> like salsa without onions. But anyways, tell me what you're going to say about the end. So I'm, like, curled up eating chips. Okay? I'm eating them. And I think to myself, I have to stop eating these chips. Because, God forbid, because I already gasped and jumped one time i cannot choke on these chips <laughs> okay i'm like i have to stop so i stop eating the chips and i'm watching and i know right like i know it's coming i know it's coming and it still fucking got me dude and i was like i, I took such a sharp inhale gasp i was like <gasps> like in it, uh, my fucking body just <gasps> like that was my jump and i was just like I also had anxiety for the next, like, two hours last night before I was able to, like, go to bed. I had to actually listen to the anxiety song. There's, like, a song that, like, reduces your anxiety by, like, fucking 65% or something. Like, I had to actually, like, lay in bed and listen to the song to be able to, like... What's the anxiety song? Calm myself. I'll have to look it up. I don't remember that. Name. Is that by like, oh gosh, I didn't even know there's an anxiety song. Well, I don't, it's just like, it's just one particular song that's like known to lower anxiety. I'll look it up. So this is how I react. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. And then boom, it happens. And I go, fuck, <laughs> you fuckers. Fuck, you fuckers. That's what I do. Like I get mad at them. So people might hate me for this. My six-year-old probably picked that up when I get really, really scared. She she will, because I did that before, like my kids, remember when they were hiding under my blankets? Yes. But you, don't, but you were there. And they popped out and I was like, fuck you. Like, it's just like yes. this reaction. They all laugh. Well, my, my six-year-old does that too. If you scare her, she'll be like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like a reaction and then, and then you like calm down but i was i was like that i was like that's hilarious f you <laughs> yes. scaring me but it was so great there i i don't think we talked about this but in our um in our you should have left episode i can't remember if we talked about this or not but like the little girl when she gets scared she was like shit like i really appreciated the weird like realism of that moment <laughs> Because it's real. Yeah, it is. Okay, so this this uh, song is called Weightless by Marconi Union. Okay. And if you have anxiety, I highly recommend just listening to it if you feel anxious. So I, I, I had to do some work last night, dude. I was like so fucking anxious after this movie, actually. And I think part of it was excitement at how good it was. And I've, like, stopped taking ashwagandha, my ashwagandha stuff, for, like, several days. Like, I'm kind of trying to cycle it because I read online that you're supposed to not take it so consistently. <laughs> Which I might go back to taking it because I don't like feeling like this. But, um, so there was a few things at play that could have made me more anxious than usual. But I was, like, super anxious last night. And then today doing the research for this you know podcast i watched the tr the short right mm -hmm. like the little prank video and that fucking gave me the same feeling again for like an hour like i was like my heart was racing i was just like i felt like i couldn't catch my breath like it's so anxiety inducing and i i've said that about a few movies but this movie is really high up on that like anxiety scale which makes it great 
Yeah, I le- I agree with you. I was talking to I think my daughter today about about scary movies and um there's when it has to do with like serial killers or murderers, it's scary because uh it's real. But on the other hand, you feel like at the end of the day, if you make sure all your windows are locked and your doors are locked and everything is secure, there is this element of I'm I'm going to be okay um, against a real burglar or killer or whatever the case may be, right? Yeah. But if it is a ghost or paranormal, you're screwed. There's like there is literally no amount of preparation that you can take. And so I think that's why to me it's so scary. And after watching something like that when I lie down at bed. It's hard for me because I can't just say, oh, all my doors are locked and all my windows are secure and nobody could peek in and blah, 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 because the fucking ghost is probably right there in the corner. And if I throw a blanket, I'll see its form. You know, you you never know. Yeah, exactly. And like, for me, it wasn't like the concept of the movie. It was like that it physiologically... Oh, sparked something in you because you were jumping so much? Yes. Like, it was like, I wasn't super scared of the concept as I was, like, laying down to go to sleep or whatever. Like, that didn't, but I just, I was like, you know, you can just tell your body has, like, an anxiety reaction and Mm -hmm. you, like, can't, you can't calm down. You can't, you know, it's, I don't, it's hard to explain unless you've you've felt it yourself. I anxiety. I do. I have it. So I totally get what you're saying. So it was weird. And then the fact that, though, I had it again today, I was just like, damn, it's like, this did such a good job of making you so scared. I was really impressed by that. Yeah, I agree. So, So I read this, like, long fucking interview, and I took, like, a handful of notes, just, like, little chunks of this interview that I thought were really interesting. Um, So there's this website called shortoftheweek.com that interviewed uh, the director, Rob Savage. So he said in the process of creating the the prank in the short video, this was based on like a fear that he himself had, right? So he said that he was terrified that somebody was living in the attic of the place that he was living. And it's because it was the only place that he couldn't get into because he did not have a ladder to get up into the attic. And he continued to like hear sounds Like, and he could hear, like, walking above him, but he, like, never checked it out. Like, he was like, I never went up there and looked, just like a normal horror movie, (laughs) you know, star. I never went up there to see what was going on. And then COVID hit, and I was stuck in my place and couldn't leave. And then I was even more freaked out by the fact that there could be somebody above me. And then he says this. This is a quote from this interview. Then one day I came back to my flat and right below the attic door, there was a chocolate bar wrapper and I don't have any chocolate in the house and I don't eat chocolate bars. I have no idea where it came from. That really freaked me out. But again, I didn't do anything about it. I carried on with my life and the lockdown happened and suddenly I couldn't leave the house and there might be a serial killer above me. So I decided to check it out and there was nothing there. But I was so scared and I quickly realized, oh, there's something here that I can use to freak my friends out. I was obviously bored after a month of lockdown. (laughs) But what a fucking terrifying proposition. I think this is one of those things. There are just a few things that make me feel like I want to throw up when I think about it. And this is one of those things. The fact that somebody could be living in the space that you're in, it makes me nauseous. Yeah. Like when I told you that story about my kid in their closet, remember? Yes. Yeah. It's a terrifying, fucking terrifying thought of someone being in your space and you don't know. What was that? It was my... It was my car. (laughs) What was that? I will never be a part of a Zoom meeting, ever. The same way after watching this movie ever. I knew. Because you know what I watched on YouTube after that? I watched paranormal shit that happened by people who were recording. Oh, no. And they were were mostly gamers. And it looked pretty realistic. Their reactions. Their reactions looked realistic. But always in the back of my head when I'm watching paranormal videos is that they set this shit up. Yeah. You know, because... 
there's like they'll show pictures and they'll be like oh my god that's terrifying and they'll be like yeah but it was proved to be a hoax so i have so much in that head in my head about that with paranormal stuff i just want to see some really legit paranormal like no one's trying to screw me over paranormal but anyways i don't know if these people were their reactions looked really real you know because they supposedly were just starting to live stream and do gaming right and yeah like some shit went down but i started to watch that and now now i will never be in a zoom meeting I same i'm like looking at people's backgrounds <laughs> I was Just also like, case. are we going to be able to record this podcast episode? Because we're on Zoom and like, is it going to freak us out? But Yeah, no. but good old wall. Nothing. Nothing behind us. And sorry, that was just my coiled The only thing cord. is, if something comes from this hallway and goes, ah, but <laughs> <laughs> you'll see it. <laughs> my little wiener dog, Rizzo, yeah. came in and I saw something move and I'm like, fuck, it's happening. <laughs> Dude, and today I, and I looked down and it was her and I'm like, mother. I know. Today I sh- <laughs> this is gonna sound so stupid. I shut my fucking door and just I like wasn't you know, I was looking over here and I went to shut the door and the actual like you know the metal piece that the door locks into? Like that shit snuck yeah. up on me. Like that got me today. <laughs> after all this, after all this research, I was all <laughs> My poor daughter can't even approach me. Like, I'm literally just in the kitchen doing something, and she walks up, and I go, <gasps> and she's like, Mom, God, ton. I was just walking into the kitchen, and I'm like, you're just going to have to get used to it. Because yeah. between YouTube and the podcast, I am just, yes. like, mentally screwed. You just have to <laughs> announce <laughs> yourself. Hello, I'm here. I'm right I here. I am coming into the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you have to do. It is what it is. My little one does it all the time because I'm on Zoom. And I'll put a background when for work because oh, um, yeah. I record in the other room um, into uh, in our main area. And so you can see my living room, the kitchen. You can see everything um, because that's where I go because my husband works in the, this space um, because he does demos all day. So he's with clients. So I go in the other room because I'm not. And so I have a background. So when yeah. my little one silently i swear to god all my children are like ghosts they're all <laughs> so quiet not all the time though right like when i would want to chill they're not quiet <laughs> but when i'm recording and all of a sudden she'll come up and she'll be like right here but i won't know because my background doesn't show her yeah and then i'll go <laughs> she's just she's just sitting here like this with her little kid <laughs> I just all the all the time every day and I'm just you know what I'm just gonna embrace it it is my new normal yeah it's my new normal you have to (laughs) um okay so let's see in the same interview he said I think watching it in the same way that you communicate it lulls people into the rhythm of the movie for that reason we kept the zoom top and bottom bars and the speaker boxes and the names and all that stuff that you associate with zoom We kept that on because we knew that people were going to be watching on their laptops. The more they can almost fool themselves into thinking they're sitting silently on a Zoom call, the better. Which is, you said that earlier. You were like, I felt like I was there. I want to hand him him an Academy Award. That so worked. Because even at one point I was like, she's chatting you. There's a chat message. Just a chat. Check her chat. Because there was like, there was a chat. And then, but then you don't check the chat because her face Caroline starts oh, slamming yeah. into, but I was like, Caroline's chatting you. Click the chat. Click the somebody. Click the chat, and then she starts getting bashed. So I totally agree with that. I loved being like this, and then yeah. looking around and seeing everybody doing the same thing in the movie. That was totally. great. It was so good. Um, okay, so let's see. What else did he say in here? The original concept we pitched to Shudder was that it would be a real-time 40-minute call, and we'd do that cutoff at the end exactly as you would when a free meeting ends. Uh, yeah. The film takes place in movie time, so it's meant to be a 40-minute meeting, but it actually ends up being like 56 minutes, which really I just feel like as a viewer you don't pick up on, and it seems like as a creator they were just sort of like, fuck it, <laughs> close enough, which is great because you don't. Yeah. You don't think about that as a viewer. I didn't catch it. I totally was like, oh. I told all the kids. I was like, oh. Because, because obviously the teens don't know. They don't use Zoom. 
if you don't have a paid subscription, the movie, I mean, it's not the movie, sorry, the Zoom ends and and they're like, oh, shit, that's so cool. Smart. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so realistic. Um, so I'm going back. I mean, again, I took these notes out of order, so I'm sorry, but <laughs> this, it said um, there were also prosthetic effects and remote control devices and other effects. He says, we beat the shit out of all of their houses. Savage laughed. They were all totally game. Everyone wanted this movie to be as good and as fun as possible. Good. Poughkeepsie Tapes and any other movie. Take note. There are good, dedicated actors out there. Yes. Get them. Use them. Like, anybody making a movie, I say hire any of these these actors that were in this host movie. I thought they these, did phenomenal. They're going to be, you know, asking for top dollar now that they're Hell in such yeah. a... yeah. Yeah, and good for them. But yep. I'm just saying, if so you got a small good. budget, maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> um, so obviously it was filmed all during COVID. Uh, I don't know if I said that, so I wanted to make sure I covered that base. And then I found this Entertainment Weekly interview with Rob Savage that I thought really because i really wanted to know like how did they do the fucking effects because they were so good so Mm -hmm. i like really went digging for this so this is the only like thing that i found but i think it kind of explains all of what we may have questions about he said rob savage that's one of the things that was really exciting when we realized that anyone with an internet connection could be part of our film We made a big master list at the start of the process of cool people who were furloughed and basically waiting for a phone call to do something. We had a bunch of stunt performers who were all isolating, and we had pyrotechnics people and special effects people. We just figured out ways to sneakily cut between these different locations so that we could cut from an actor's house into a stunt performer's house. So they'd do a crazy stunt and we'd cut back to the actor's house amazing seriously this is really amazing amazing holy shit that is so cool that is like, so so cool you cannot help but give it up for this movie for the fucking ingenuity like even yeah. if you didn't like it you have to be like god damn they did a fucking great job yeah. it, especially in covid like i just my brain is like oh you can't get together in the same room a shoot's not happening Fuck that noise because it's and so hard. And they even hard. use stunt doubles and stuff like that. Like pir- all of that. Wow. Do you think for the podcast we should do like a Zoom seance? Oh my God. I don't know. I've never <laughs> done anything like that and it freaks me out if I'm honest. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I don't want any evil stuff. No disrespect or anything like that. Maybe I'd be open to it, but I have sworn off. I will never do a Ouija board. You know what? The the whole Ouija board thing, I agree. I totally thought that, and I'm still in, in that base. Um, and then this, I uh, I had done, like, I had worked with a psychic, and she was really cool, and um, she had said that Ouija boards are not evil. Like, you can communicate with, you know, the dead or spirits or elementals, um, so it, in it, in and of itself, it's not evil. It's just become evil in movies, but there's still that thing in me that just is so scared Yeah, that it's evil. Like, I don't want to invite like something in. And she kept saying like, no, if you create a space and you're saying, I want to talk to this person or I want to talk to ancestors or whatever the case may be, that's what will come through. But I don't know, like, I don't know. It's scary to me too. It's, it's it's freaky. And I think that's part of why this movie itself is so effective is you think about doing something like this over Zoom where you can't actually be in physical contact with other people. And for some reason, yeah. that leads me to believe that you're more open and susceptible to like negative forces. And so it just was genius the way they put this together. Yeah. So I loved how, I'm so glad that you, because I was going to ask you, you answered all my questions that I was going to ask you right up front. I was going to ask you, like, what did you think about the plot? What did you think about the acting? Like, I was like, and you were just like, boom, boom, boom. I but was I, so scared for that last girl. Um, yeah. Because that element of her friends and the 
she kept saying, don't leave, don't leave, don't leave. Remember that? Yes. Because if you think about it, if people log off the Zoom, you are truly alone. Yeah. Because at least on the Zoom, you and I are here. If something happens to me, you can see it. You can be witness to it. You're not here physically to help me, but you're here to be witness to it. You're gone. I am utterly alone. And that was terrifying. Yeah. I'm so shocked they didn't get together physically sooner, too. That was the only other thing that I was like, man, why don't just... I mean, you'd you'd think that they're semi-close to each other. Just fucking run to each other's houses. But we don't know that. Like, maybe not. Maybe they're not. Yeah, maybe they're not. We only know that the two are close, and they do end up meeting in physical space. Maybe the other ones, like, they knew each other in high school, but they moved away to college, or they... Or whatever. Or maybe they're friends like you and I are. Where right. We've not met in person, but we feel like good friends, but we've literally not met in person because we've met, you know, over the internet. So, I mean, like, you never know. Just yeah. those two. Yeah. True. So true. good. Do you think you would have jumped out of the window? I don't know. I might have. At the very end, I'm sorry. The very um, last girl. What was her name? With a blonde... Uh, oh. But anyways, she was really smart. She would like throw the flower. Oh, yeah. Oh my God, the mask. Okay, so so many times I don't know if your company does it, but like my uh, the people I work with in the company I work with, they're always putting those uh, the Zoom filters. You know what I mean? Like Zoom has come out with these new filters, or you could put all these different filters on your face when you're talking via Zoom. So when she was look with the computer looking around and that mask came on, you could see it as corny. But if you really think about it, Zoom is detecting a fucking face where there is no face. I and at first and the everyone on the video, sorry, was going, take off your filter, take off your filter because they didn't realize it. And my teens were like, what is that? What is that? And I'm like, Zoom detects a face (laughs) in the room and it's putting a filter on it and they're like oh my god like that i love that and then when it looked at her oh my gosh i love that i loved it that's i want to watch a movie so bad with you in the room (laughs) yes you've just sold me on your like movie presence (laughs) But I, that was the one other thing that I was, like, iffy on. I was, like, I don't know. You know, maybe I can get behind the fact that, like, Zoom detects a face and, like, there's, you know, a camera can see different stuff than the human eye can. But that was the one other thing that I was, like, I don't know. I could have done without. You know what I mean? Like, Mm. I, I felt like it was on the edge of cheesy. If it wasn't in the movie, it wouldn't have lost anything. I agree with that. Right. I was totally bought into, though, that the camera can see other things. Yeah. That's... Like, but it might have been because I was watching this YouTube thing about cameras. <laughs> and they had this camera where it literally, it was that thing I was telling you about, about the gamers, you know, recording okay, yeah. stuff. And it was like the person was talking and they were messing with their camera and they were doing this thermal thing and in here it literally looked like somebody looked in and looked out and looked in and looked out thermally but the person said that they were by themselves and I was like oh my god so I was bought into it it wasn't terrible I just I it was like one of the other things that I I found myself it took me out of it a little bit where I was like would Mm -hmm. it grab a face I don't know but it wasn't terrible I liked it yeah I, I liked all that I loved how even though she threw the blanket and you knew, you knew it was going to go on a form when it went on the form of a human. So scary. It Dude. was so scary. I think maybe I would jump out the window to my death. Like, that's fucking, like, not cool. Oh, I don't. Okay, maybe I'm misremembering, but I I got the impression she didn't jump. Are you saying that she jumped? I thought she jumped out the window. I got she... the impression she was thrown. Oh, shit. I thought because she opened the window and then I thought she was like, not that she intentionally wanted to die, but it was like. Just trying to get um, out. Yeah, yeah. Like when you see, you know, footage of people who are in burning buildings Mm -hmm. and they jump out because of what, you know, the 
the fire and everything is, is too intense that even though they know the likelihood of them surviving is, is well, not likely, they still, they still are compelled to do it. Mm. That's what I thought, but maybe not she was thrown. Maybe I, that's kind of the just initial impression I got, but, um, yeah, let's that's talk. what I was, ta- that's what I was talking to you about in the beginning. Like, okay. I stopped with the kids too. I was like, do you think you would have jumped in? And my kids were like, yeah, I would have jumped out. Um, and I was like, gosh, I wonder if I knew that the likelihood of me living was not high. If I jumped, if I would have jumped, I don't, I'm not sure. I don't know. Yeah, the way that she also landed outside of the window was just, like, weird. That's not... I don't think that's how you'd land if you had jumped. I don't know. Mm. But I also... I do feel Mm -hmm. like if I were in enough of a panic, I'm such a runner. I'm such a flighter that I do think I would jump out of a window. Absolutely. If I were faced with, I'm going to burn to death or I'm going to jump out and maybe break some bones or, like, break my back and die... I would rather jump. Yeah, that shit be would be quick. so scary. Oh my god. What a terrible choice to be faced with for sure, but I, I think mm-hmm. that's how I would handle it. Of course you don't know not being in the situation, but I almost think I would too. Like I'm just thinking of that blanket wrapping around that form. Fuck. Hell no. You'd be out of there, yeah. dude. I'd be ru- I'd be out. The moment yeah. I see something scary, I'm fucking out. And you wouldn't try to go around that thing. No. Because what even is that thing? Yeah, you would probably jump out the window or else, what else are you going to do? What else are you going to do? Because that thing is going to take the blanket off and then where is it? Like, yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think I would do the same thing. Yeah. But um, let's talk about moments, actually. Because, like, we, I think we've been talking about this movie as a whole a lot, but we haven't talked about, like, specific moments when there were so many good fucking moments in this movie yeah. Like, I loved just, like, scenes. Like, I was like, the like when she gets hit by that bottle, when Gemma <laughs> finally shows up in the other apartment, she's standing, looking around, and there's, like, a bottle that swipes off and fucking clocks her right in the head, and she knocks her out. I was like, damn, that looked good, and it, it was scary. It knocked her out, and then she disappeared. Mm-hmm. And then showed up in another area. Like, she was still in the kitchen, but not where she would have been knocked out, right? Um, That's what we saw. Me, me and, uh, when we were watching the movie, she was knocked out. It digitally looked like she disappeared. And then when she woke up from that view, it looked like she was really close to where um, her friend was filming. And not over there, over by the door, where she was originally knocked out. Um... I don't remember exactly, but I feel like what happened was she got knocked out. She's far away. And then there's like a rumbling or there's some noise that happens. And so she starts to panic and fucking, I think she like puts a hand up and smacks the camera, the Mm. computer down by herself. So that kind of made sense to me. I was like, you, you would be startled by noise and you'd grab the laptop. And so I really liked that. But what else? I really loved the... Um, like fire scene and the scene where the girl like gets her neck broken above the pool like there were just like moments in this movie that I was like holy shit this is great like the chairs moving when that Mm -hmm. guy fell down from the ceiling also this is probably one of my favorite parts I loved that she's in the background you know she puts herself on mute she's looking around looking around calling him asking him did you see my boyfriend leave they're like no can't find him can't find him walks up to the camera falls down behind her Ugh, creepy it was so good and my um my teens were like why is she so angry at them you know like because they're like hey hey get you know get out of your house get out of your house and they're like why is she so mad because she gets on she's like what and i'm like she's mad because Think about it. Just like Goodnight Mommy, where people are like, oh, she's a bad mom because she's angry. Let's, let's think about it. She obviously has some friction with her boy, her man, yes. right? He's chopping shit and she's trying to get on the thing. She's pissed and he goes to the room. Then when she gets up, he's gone. Okay, he just left. 
Then she's calling people. No, we haven't seen him. No, we haven't heard from him. No, we haven't seen him. She's like, Not to Where? mention fric- friction with her friends, too, right? Like, she's mm-hmm. dealing with, like, she's in the middle of the friction of the friends. Keep going. Yeah, yes. And her man, and she's like, well, where is he? Like, she's probably worried and pissed. Let's be real. Yeah. She's pissed that he just walked out. No one knows where he is. Where is that motherfucker? And she's worried, though, too. Like, where is that motherfucker? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) She's like, she's both. And her friends are like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. And she's probably like, what? God, what is what? And then, boom. Like, whoa. Whoa. I, how about the scene with, oh my God, it got me. Kath, um, Caroline, she even in the beginning talks about the video of her walking in and, yeah. and doing the thing, right? And uh, uh, my teens were like, why would they do that? And I'm like, people do it all the time. <laughs> like I've seen it, like they record it. It's like, it's a quarantine thing. It's like, how do we <laughs> yeah. make this meeting more interesting? And so when we were like, where's Caroline? And then that video plays and she walks in. We're like, oh, okay, she's cool. And they were like, no, she's not. That's the video. Oh, my god! Like, we were so worried about her. And then the slamming of the fate. Gosh. Oh, that was was good. good. And it's so quick. Like, you know, you see her, like, head slamming. Again and again. I was just like, yes. Like, in the most, like, fucked up, like, I I obviously Dude, they could totally do a sequel, right? Because we don't know for sure. Like we know the one girl. Well, actually we don't know even the girl that jumped out the window, we don't know for sure she's dead. We know she's definitely fucked up. But we don't know that she's dead. Everybody's questioning. We don't know that anybody's dead, actually. Mm -hmm. Except the guy that burned. Well, maybe not. Maybe he burned. No one no one knows really. Like and so I think it does leave it open. This is an exciting sequel. I wouldn't mind seeing these people. Me either. I was also immediately, like, attached to all these characters. Yeah. I just, they were so humanized, I feel like, as characters that I immediately was, like, on board. And then they've got their friend mm-hmm. Teddy, who I was like, great, I'm on board with this guy immediately. And then even though he, like, logs off and comes back on, you're just attached to him as a character. Like they did, yeah. Such I was a good super job. pissed off with him, but that makes him a good character because it was realistic. Like me, I probably, I probably would have been the person who organized it. If I'm yeah. thinking about it, like I would have been scared. The only thing that irritated me, this was a very small thing, that the the woman who organized it, and I don't, Hannah, or, I don't remember her name, Haley, um. I kept, we kept saying, turn on your damn lights because other people had their lights on. Like, you don't have to have your lights off. The ghost is coming to all these people with their lights on. Like, turn on your lights. Now, I don't know if it was supposed to be assumed that the lights went out. I felt like that wasn't clear because everyone else had lights on. So she still, after all these people are dying and stuff, is it really realistic that she's going to walk through her house looking around in pitch black like yeah. i felt if it was supposed to be that she had um like her electricity was out there should have been even a fraction of a second where she tried to turn on the light so that it was and clear it that she couldn't because that was irritating it was irritating to us all like turn on your lights everybody else's lights are on like what are you still doing like oh let's do the scenes with my lights off after everyone's dying and shit that was irritating to me to be honest um, shoot. I went on this tangent about the lights, but that was my, <laughs> that was my second thing that irritated me after the, yeah, the COVID elbow. shake. Yeah. That was, um, that was unrealistic to me. Like, why didn't she turn on the lights? However, I don't think she should have been able to because I loved the flash scene at the end where they were trying to light up the space with the flash. Yeah. So I just think maybe, um, like, it's not even a half a second. It's less than that of somebody trying to turn on the lights so it was clear that the lights didn't work would have been good. Totally. You just solve that problem in a half a second. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Totally. It removes that kind of disbelief there. Yeah. I went on tangent. I don't even know where I was started. 
with that before I went to the light. Oh, I think we were just it. talking about moments, like moments in this. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't even know. You're talking about the guy and the, the fire. Um, oh, that's what it was. That's what it was. I was talking about how I would probably be Haley. Because when the guy came on and he was just smoking his thing and being kind of um, like, this is stupid, I said to my teens, if that fucking guy's not into it, why doesn't he log off? So I think I would be Haley. I was like, look, if you're not into it, stop acting like a prick with his dick out. Like, I'm so fucking cool. Log the fuck off and play around with your stupid ass girlfriend while we all do this. Like, I was so irritated, which, that was good. That was a good actor right there that it affected me so much. So irritated by how he was acting. Yeah. And everyone taking shots, it even, that wasn't so bad, but it just irritated me because I felt like, I'm with you, Haley. Like, you yeah. are organizing this thing. If all of you, Gemma, who fucked us all up, <laughs> think it's so stupid then go fucking do your own thing yeah and i will do this with some serious people so go I'm watch obviously... netflix do yeah. whatever you were gonna do on a normal saturday night don't get on this fucking zoom call yes i yes. agree i also <laughs> would be a Haley. i'm a Haley in this situation so that's why we're nice. soul sisters because we're the fucking yes. organizers we're pissed to t- hey take it seriously don't be disrespectful like just and then when that girl was like, ha, 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 I was just kidding. I, I felt lividity. I was mad. <laughs> lividity. Lividity. L- lividness rising. Like, are you kidding me? Get off the call. So I loved it, by the way, when she was like, shut the fuck up. Like, she was so mad at her. I was like, yes. Yeah. Yes. You would be. That's You'd be pissed. Yeah. And especially with Teddy, even like... You know, they're pissed because he gets on and off. And, like, again, I also was like, okay, the shot thing didn't piss me off so much. But the moment that he was like, what's the name of that plane again? I was so fucking mad. Yeah, I was get like, off the call. If you have better stuff to do with your ditzy-ass girlfriend, then do it. Okay. Like, that irritated me. Yeah. Like, I can be all for some games because... I've been on a Zoom call, not saying where or when, because I don't want to be in trouble, where we're doing Zoom call, and I may be slacking, me and someone slacking, with some <laughs> funny memes, right? And we're trying yep. not to laugh. Totally get the shot thing. I, I agree. I I get that. But the, the blatant disrespect, like, this is fucking stupid. Yeah. If it's so fucking stupid, then log off the call. Like, what's... Yeah, I'm a Haley. Yeah. Hashtag Haley. Hashtag we're Haley. With we're with you, girl. <laughs> Hashtag Haley support. <laughs> Hashtag Haley support. Yeah. Hashtag Haley United. <laughs> yeah. That was a much better hashtag <laughs> than my hashtag. Uh, totally. Totally. Um, What is your rating? What is your rating? I know I asked you first last time. Okay, I'll go. I... Yeah, you go. Mm. This is a tough one. This is a tough one. It's tough. I almost want to pull out my... I'm going to say a four. Oh. I almost wanted to do a 4.5, but I think I'm going to stick with a four only because I keep thinking about the fact that I rated The Descent a four. (laughs) Like, that's one of my favorite movies ever. I should have actually probably given that a five. But I'm gonna I'm yeah, gonna do a four. Okay. So Tommy and I, it may be a completely arbitrary voting system. Mechanism. But mechanism, but we take it very seriously. I literally thought about this all night. Me I've been thinking about it all day, dude. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm gonna have to say a four point five. Oh. So originally I thought a four point five. Um, and the level five was just bringing all of that to a deeper, more psychological level, um, which would have brought it to a five. So I thought 4.5, but then when you were talking about how brilliantly and beautifully this was created, 
and how it was created, I was wavering towards a five because of mad respect for how this movie was created. Um, but I am going to stick with a 4.5 just because, just, just because that five level is like mind blowing five level, which I think this director is told and the actors is totally capable of just like, can't wait to see what these people produce next. Yeah. Okay. Can I change mine to a 4.5 also? <laughs> yes. Cause you sold me on it, dude. You sold me as you were talking about it. And I think I want to retroact- retroactively change the descent to a 4.5. Okay. Can I do okay. that? Okay. Absolutely you can. We're in charge. <laughs> we. This is our thing. We absolutely can. Okay. I love it. Because I'm constantly thinking, because in the early movies, we were kind of winging it. But now as we graded movies, I always think about, well, what did I grade that? And how did I feel you know, in that, and on, in our world, we can absolutely do that. We can absolutely change it. You're right. We're the fucking masters of our domain. And it's our world. It, it, you're, to, to what you're saying, it's like with more context kind of helps, you know, move stuff around. And I do think, when I think of like the best horror movies, if somebody were to ask me like top 10 horror movies, I think I'd put The Descent in the top 10, which means it has to be like a five. So maybe I should just bump that one up to a five because it's like one of my favorite of all time. It's like your favorite. My favorite of all time, I, I bumped to a five. We haven't reviewed it yet, so I'm not going to talk about it. But like I when I'm thinking about movies, I, I rate it to that movie because that yeah. movie just utterly terrified me. So... um. This movie, I wasn't utterly psychologically and physically terrified, but I was jump scared out of my ass constantly. I have mad respect for how it was created. I loved the actors. I loved the theme. I loved the movie. So It was just for- fun, dude. It was just mm-hmm. fun. It was it just was a- so fun. I'm so shocked. I'm so glad it was good because I just, I know that everybody else has watched it and I was like just preparing myself to hate it, but it was so good. Yeah, it was. Something we never, never, ever, ever ask, because we just love you and we just talk constantly and, and love and we share and it's fantastic, but we should ask, if you like <laughs> our podcast or our YouTube, so if you like Two Chicks in a Horror Flick and feel so compelled to be like share how much you like it with the world, we would love for you to subscribe to us either on YouTube or on the podcast, wherever you listen or to the podcast. Or on Spotify. Okay, Spotify, oh, sorry, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, you know, all of that stuff. If you um, want to subscribe, at, so we are on so many platforms. I'm like I know it's hard. Log everything. Okay, so if you want to subscribe on Spotify, sweet. I don't think you can review it there because. I just don't think you can. I don't know. Maybe I've not. never reviewed anything. I've just followed it. Um, if you're on Apple, you can review if you feel so compelled and you can subscribe. So if you want to. If you're a YouTuber, oh, holler. Um, I've watched enough YouTube with my daughter, who's, I talked about it last episode, super knowledgeable. She'd be like, subscribe, hit the alarm button to get notified yeah. <laughs> for our new, our new post and give us a thumbs up. Uh, if you feel so compelled, you like what we do, we'd appreciate it. And on that note, we're kicking off our Flickr Treat October with Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. So we're so excited for some Halloween vibes. Oh, yes. Yes. I cannot and we're, wait. We're big fans of the books. So I have seen this movie. Felicia has not. So. I have not, but I have read all the books, and all of my children have the books, <laughs> so we love the books. I am so excited to see this movie. I can't wait to see what stories they cover, because I have such good memories of the different stories that are in that book that I just, I can't wait to see what they what they do. I'm so excited, dude. I could not. My cheeks hurt from smiling about it. I'm so excited. And remember, we're doubling up. This is like October balls to the wall. From the window to the, <laughs> to the wall. wall. To the we- wall. <laughs> to the sweatshirt. Yeah. Um, so that is what we're doing. We can't wait. Um, and we hope you're 
on this ride with us. Yeah, it's so much fun. Follow us on Instagram or our website or Facebook. Remember, two chicks in a whore flick all across the board. That's where you can find us. Unless you're looking on Twitter. If you're a Twitter type person, you're fully into tweets. You have to look to two chicks HF because you know our our name is way too long for too Twitter. Long. <laughs> yeah. So so just look or go to our website. You can click on the little Twitter icon and it'll bring you there. But yeah, wherever wherever you want to find us, we are going to announce what we're doing. So have a good night and have no nightmares. <laughs> <laughs>